hope you're doing well since we last spoke. I am in my third semester. Yay! <laughs> so last semester, I spent a lot of time volunteering at the COVID vaccine clinic. I ended up reaching out to my supervisor to see if it would be okay to film some clips for my YouTube video. And so I'm going to show you guys a little tour on the vaccine clinic I volunteer at as well as a little bit behind the mRNA technology being used in these COVID vaccines as well as my vaccine experience and then a little bit from a Hopkins nurse sharing. Let's start with the vaccine clinic tour. We're headed down to the COVID clinic right now. They're not open till 7.30. So this is where you would sign up for registration. So I work right there. You get checked in right here. There's only two tables actually, but we're only doing one right now. So this is where you go when you're waiting for your vaccine. Waiting here till you're cold at one of the tables. There's hella tables. I mean, heck, and that's where they set up for the. Yeah, and right there is where they set up for the doses. Um, pharmacists will usually pull up the vials of the Pfizer vaccine and get it going for the vaccinators. So yeah, here's a closer look at some of the tables. This is what it looks like. You have a little computer just to check in, and then you have little baskets to put the vaccines in. You have your little. Um, sharps container there to get rid of the needles, things to wipe down the table, COVID precautions, whatnot. But yeah, like we have 11 tables, actually 12 tables, but this is where you would go towards the exit station. So this is considered the post vaccination waiting area. This is where you would wait for 15 minutes to monitor any adverse reactions that you may have to the vaccine. So lots of space down here. Um, I've also worked over here before. That's the Essex station where you just monitor for any symptoms. With that, you usually work with a paramedic or an EMT, so you're not by yourself. You also have a bunch of nurses who are ready to go, who are qualified to help. So, yeah, very safe, very nice. And, um, yeah, I went through the whole process for vaccination here as well. Just kind of what to expect. So you're checking in at registration, which I volunteer at a lot. Um, so registration, then you'd go on to waiting for your vaccine. You can get administered vaccine by a pharmacist, a doctor, or a nurse. Um, and then you would go over to the post-vaccination waiting area to monitor for any symptoms. But yeah, pretty streamlined process. I hope you all found that vaccine clinic tour interesting. Next, I just wanted to dive in a little quick summary as to what the COVID vaccines are. COVID vaccines use mRNA technology mRNA just stands for messenger RNA in order to deliver immunity. Normally in traditional vaccines, you will put in weakened or inactivated bacteria virus in order for your cells to build immunity off of them. With mRNA, you can think of them as short instructions that tell your body how to build proteins that trigger an immune response inside your body. Essentially, these vaccines will help your body recognize foreign substances like the coronavirus, which are antigens, so it knows how to react if it comes into contact with it. Our bodies will send the T cells to fight the infected cells and B cells to help make antibodies, which will help fight infections and prevent it from infecting healthy cells. In the coronavirus, the Antigen is the spike protein that attaches to your cells and infects them. The mRNA vaccine uses a lipid vehicle to enter our cells and once inside, ribosomes are able to utilize the code to make a protein chain similar to the coronavirus's spike protein. The cells then temporarily appear to be that spike protein, thus prompting our immune cells to respond as if the antigen was actually present like it would be in a traditional vaccine, which results in the production of antibodies. A thing to note about these mRNA vaccines, they cannot alter your DNA. They never enter the nucleus of the cell where your DNA is, so there's no way of altering it. And another thing about this is mRNA technology has actually been researched and in development for quite some time, and it was actually used um, and studied in for the flu and for rabies as well. This was not something that was just created overnight. 
So let's talk about herd immunity. When a majority of the population is immune to an infectious disease, indirect protection or herd immunity or population immunity, whatever you want to call it, can be given to those who are not immune to the disease and for those who can't get vaccinated, for example. Things like the measles, mumps, polio, all of that used to be very common, but Thanks to vaccines, they are considered very rare to get nowadays because of all the vaccines that have been distributed and the herd immunity that was reached. Getting herd immunity for COVID-19 is so, so important because variants are popping up and one of the best ways to try to control what's happening right now is by getting herd immunity. So I really urge you guys to get vaccinated. Now I want to go into my vaccine experience a little bit. I received the Pfizer vaccine, so like I shared, I also received my vaccine from that clinic. And I was actually very lucky. My vaccine experience was not as serious as some people for my first dose. I just had pain at the injection site, which is super common. For my second dose, I actually had a headache, which is another top common symptom. I don't really have any like severe reactions to vaccines in general, so yeah, I think I just got pretty lucky. I've had some friends who've had a little bit more severe reactions, but they all went away um, by the second day. So I really urge you to do your own research. I know that there's a lot of false information out there. So check your sources for what you're looking into. Vaccination is so, so important. And I really urge you to do your own research, gather your own information and look into um, very reliable sources when you're gathering that information. I actually listed some sources that I looked into this video and that are just reputable sources in general if you would like to have um, an opportunity to do your own research. So I really recommend that you do that, but please, please get vaccinated. Um, you'll hear in a second from a Hopkins nurse as well. I'm MC. I work in Weinberg 5B, leukemia Hopkins unit. Um, greatest patients ever. Definitely be vaccinated if it's not for yourself, your family. I do it for my patients as well because they are immunocompromised and they need to be able to be having people who take care of them that are not um, at risk or who are actually COVID free. So get yeah. vaccinated. Yes, get vaccinated. <laughs> I hope y'all learned something from this video and please, please, please get vaccinated. Please get vaccinated. Thank you to everyone who has been following me on my nursing school journey. I know I've been a bit all over the place with posting. It's been really stressful, but here I am, you know, we're pushing through and I'm already in my third semester. So very exciting to think that in a year, literally next May, I graduate, I will be a master's prepared nurse, which is awesome. So thank you so much again for following my journey. If you're interested in seeing more, like, subscribe, um, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.